Hey everybody, it is 20 minutes to 9 on the 19th of April, Sunday, and I just got up a few minutes ago, and I will be posting two videos today, um, this vlog and a video of my cat, and I'm getting ready to eat breakfast and shower and get ready for church, and I will check in soon. Hey everybody, it's now 20 minutes to 10, and I just got out of the shower and dressed. Still got to get my hair done for church. Um, I hope you all have a blessed Sunday and I will check in when I'm getting ready to leave. Hey everybody, it's now 11 minutes after 10 and um, I am on my way to church and I am excited for what the Lord has in store for us today. I almost decided to not to go and then I was like, yeah. I'm gonna go and I think that was just Satan trying to get me out of going I said no Satan I rebuke you but anyways um I am the only one out of the family going today um uh, mom isn't feeling well and struggling with her allergies granny had a rough day yesterday and granddaddy doesn't like to go to church unless granny goes so I'm the only one going and um, I'm thoroughly excited um, and I will, hello Chuck, I will um, check in when I get to church. See ya! Hey everybody, it's now 1016 and I just got to church and I'm just going to hang out for a little bit for a few minutes, go in and hang out until um, the bell rings for Sunday school to light out and I'm very excited and I will be feeling part of the sermon like I did last Sunday for last Sunday's vlog and um I will check in after church have a blessed day our worship service here at First Brother Church. I want to thank you for being here this morning. God bless you as we assemble ourselves together and worship a risen, living, loving, awesome God. Amen. Amen. Church in our God. Amen. 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 Awesome. We serve an awesome God. If you can't tell it by now, I am excited to be here. I'm like hot dog. I've been waiting all week for the Sunday to get here because this morning I get to talk about my all-time favorite verse in the entire Bible, the gospel in a nutshell, John chapter 316. And this morning you don't need your Bibles. In fact, we're going to do something a little different this morning than we normally do. I'm going to get everybody to stand. Stand up. I'm going to raise some of you already looking like this. Hey, guess what? Chuck Silky ran 13.1 miles yesterday in the trees. <laughs> and some of y'all, the trees are one. That's right. And some of y'all, like the king stand up this morning. <laughs> Butch Willow jokingly said it to me when I was running next year. I told Butch I couldn't walk. I could run if somebody was chasing me. <laughs> But if what we're going to do this morning is a little different. We're going to all, as we're standing, we're going to together say John 3.16. I'm going to start. You jump right in. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. One more time. For, For God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You may be sick. You want to run? Take off. <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't run. Don't leave. I, I got a lot to say this morning. There's an old saying that goes like this. Familiarity breeds contempt. You ever heard that? Familiarity breeds contempt. And I'm not sure that contempt is the right word to use, but certainly... Church, when something becomes familiar to us, when something becomes every day, we get accustomed to it. We become indifferent toward it. To the point that we become unaffected by it. And many people don't know that Jesus Christ was the one that spoke those words that you just recited. And fewer people than this know to whom those words we're spoken to. Church, we hear it. We read it. We quote it. And evidence by you just standing and reciting it 
We know it, but I truly believe this morning that somehow, some way, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 in our world today has lost its punch. It's lost its meaning. We become so accustomed to some of us know and remember that Jesus Christ again was the one that spoke these words in response to a question by Nicodemus, who at that day and time was a ruler of the Jews. The church I truly believe, as I sat and I thought and I studied for this message this morning, I looked at the first 20 verses of John chapter 3 and I thought, you know, I could spend weeks, maybe a couple of months, just looking and going over. This, this one encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus. But for the sake of time and simplicity, this morning all we're going to look at is this one particular verse of Scripture. 25 words in the King James Version. This morning we're going to closely examine it. Before we do, I want to say this. Most of you know I love quotes. I love history. I'm looking back love looking back at things. I love quotes on billboards. I love them on bumper stickers, on t-shirts. Just about anywhere and everywhere I go, I see them and I love quotes. And my all-time favorite bumper sticker is what? Most of you probably know it. Jesus is my co-pilot. And I'm still carrying around a Sharpie in my truck. And you believe it or not, since I last said that, that I saw that bumper sticker that said Jesus is my co-pilot, I have been carrying around a Sharpie in a console of my truck, so when I see one, so if you got one on your car and I follow you, I'm not stopping. I'm just waiting for you to stop because I am going to take that sharpie and I'm going to make a big bold X across the world. And I'm just going to make it Jesus is my pilot because I'm here to tell you this morning, I want God Almighty flying the plane that is Mike Hamilton. Amen? Amen. I want God Almighty to be the pilot. I don't want God to be my co pilot. I want God to fly my plane. I want a, a seat in first class. And I am going to fly wherever God takes me. Amen? And that should be every one of our reasoning this morning. God is our co pilot This week I was looking around on the internet and I came across some quotes which are considered to be some of the most famous that have ever been said. And I don't have time to go through all of them, but I'm going to share a few of my favorites. Marie Antoinette once said, Pardon me, sir. She stepped upon the toes of the executioner on her way to be hung. Isaac Newton once said, If I have seen a little further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Isaac Newton said, I mean, Sun Tzu said, Keep your friends close and your enemies what? Closer. Closer. Fred Barnard said, A picture is worth a thousand words. Edward Lytton said these words, The pen is mightier than the sword. General Douglas MacArthur said, "Anyone, the man who said that the pen is mightier than the sword has never encountered automatic weapons. One of Teddy Roosevelt's famous quotes was, Speak softly and carry a weapon. Big stick and you will go far. Church, there are lots of wonderful, memorable quotes, memorable statements that have been made over the centuries of time. But I believe that the greatest thing that has ever been said by the greatest life that's ever been lived is John 3.16. It's the most loved, best known, most quoted Bible scripture in the entire Bible. Everybody knows John 3.16. We've seen it in the end zones of Super Bowls. We've seen it on race cars, on t-shirts. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how people who don't even know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior still know, they still heard John 3.16. Sadly, they don't live it. They don't understand it. They really, if you think about it, don't have a clue what it means. But at least they can quote it. That's why I think that it's the greatest thing that our Savior, Jesus Christ, ever said. Maybe that's why Martin Luther is said to have repeated John 3.16 as he was lying on his deathbed. It's reported that he said it three times just prior to dying and his last words were this, it is the Bible in itself. 
It is the Bible in itself. And I believe he's right. It is the Bible in itself. And as another gospel preacher once said, it's the gospel in a nutshell. It's the heart of the Bible. John 3.16 Hey everybody, it's now 12.20 and I just got out of church and it was an absolutely very, very powerful message today. Um, he preached on John 3.16 and, you know, just what it really meant and if we really um, took it to heart and um, if we really let it sink in and if we really knew what... Um, it meant, and it was just a very powerful message. And, um, yeah, so it was a good church service, and now I am headed home to grab some stuff to come back and take it to my mom, um, because she needs food and stuff, so I will update later. Hey everybody, it's now 4 o'clock and um, I just woke up from a much needed nap. Um, I actually didn't uh, lay down right away. I had to come home, get some stuff, take mom, take her some lunch, and then I bought me and my granddaddy some lunch and came home and ate and then finally took my nap. But um, I am going to have an early start in the morning. I have a meeting with my job coach at 8.30. <laughs> but I'm excited. Um, Tuesday is my grandmother's birthday. And um, I am getting her a surprise thing of flowers. I'm going to go out and get them tomorrow and have them delivered on Tuesday. So I'm really, really excited for that just to see her face um but anyways i'm not gonna eat dinner so i will check back in with my last update of the day soon bye everyone hey everybody it's now nine minutes to seven and i am making my last update of the day since i have two videos to edit and upload tonight um, I hope you all had a great day today. Um, I have an early start to my day tomorrow morning. Um, I have a meeting with my job coach at 8.30 to, alright, I'm just going to tell you, to take a job application back. Um, I applied for a job as a, um, professional care aide. It's where... I go in and would work with the elderly and do housework and errands and that type of work. And um, I hope I get this job because it's everything I want in a job. I've want, I have wanted a job that I would love, that involves people, and that involves making a difference. So I'm meeting with my job coach, Casey, in the morning to... Um, take my application back to pro careers and then I'm going to uh, go get my grandmother's birthday present ordered. Um, her birthday is Tuesday and um, I'm very excited. So I have a full day on tap for tomorrow. I hope you all had a great day and if you like what you see please thumbs up the video, comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you wish. I love you guys so so much and I will talk to you soon. Bye everyone.